It is written in the beginning of uh, Exodus, chapter 16, verse 2, which is Parshat Achremot, the second verse, saying, Vayomer Yerkevavke Hashem El Moshe Daber El Aharon Achicha Vi Al Yovo Bohol Eit El Hakodesh Mi Beit La Porochet Al Pene Hakaporet Ashir Al Aron Velo Yomut Ki Baanan Erae Al Hakaporet Translation And Hashem, God, said to Moshe, Speak to Aaron your brother, that he should not come at all times to the Kodesh, the holy, or the sanctuary, from within the curtain, in front of the cover that is on the ark, so that he should not die, because in a cloud I appear upon the ark cover. Now we have a lot of detail over here, and we're going to have to understand why all this detail. So, first the question is, it seems to be a prohibition against Aaron. But what about Moshe also? Does this apply to him? So, was he allowed to come at any time, or was this prohibition again directed also to him? So, one would assume that this did not apply to Moshe, being Moshe. But if so, then why does the Torah add the word Achicha? your brother, because this seems to equate them. We can answer as follows. Hashem tells Moshe that even though Aaron is on the highest level after you, and that he is your brother in every respect so much, that you might argue that there should not be any prohibition in regard to his entering the sanctuary any time. This is still not so. For, Hashem says, my understanding is greater than yours. This still does not give us a proof in regard to Moshe. But, before we answer this, there was another question that we need to address. The Torah writes that Aaron should not come to the sanctuary, which is called HaKodesh, at all times. Now, was this indeed true? that he couldn't come to the Kodesh, we know that the Mishkan was actually divided into two parts, the actual uh, sanctuaries. There was called the Kodesh, and then there was the Kodesh HaKadoshim. We're really talking about here the Kodesh HaKadoshim, so why then are we calling it here the Kodesh? This is the question. So we see we can't take it at face value, because it's not true. He could enter the Kodesh if that was referring to the other area, which is outside of the uh, parochet, the uh, curtain that separates between the Kodesh and the Kodesh Kodashim, where the Aaron was. Because if this was true that he couldn't approach then the Kodesh, then how, how is it possible that he could perform all the daily services? Because the daily services, such as lighting the menorah, the uh, showbread, the shulchan, the Torah, all that was in the Kodesh, and he performed all the Avodah, all of that service. So, then why does the Torah go out of its way and tell us HaKodesh, instead of making this more clear for us? The answer is to elude, to give us a very hint, actually, to a very deep concept. In the Torah and the life of every Jewish person, the Torah tells us, the reason that Aaron is not allowed to enter is because Ki Ba'anan Era'eh Al Hakaporat. God is saying that because I appear in the cloud on the Kaporat. It is because of this revelation of Kedusha, of holiness, that is present there, that man cannot approach and still be able to live in this world. Now, these three words, ki ba'anan era'eh, because in the cloud I appear, hold many secrets. This word is in second person being addressed to Moshe, that though I am making this prohibition that Aaron does not always come to the Kodesh Kedoshim because of the highest Kedusha there, Hashem wants Moshe to know that this does not apply to him. 
In fact, because of this high level of Kedusha that is there, this is again for Moshe because again, I appear in the cloud on the Ark cover. God is saying, I want you though to come, Tavo, because to you only do I speak Panim El Panim, face to face, as it is written in the Torah. Another word with the same gematria of 409 is the word Hakodesh, which is spelled with the Vav, which means again the sanctuary. Of course, this word should be familiar because the Torah uses it to refer to only here the Kodesh Hakdoshim. Now, it is written before these three words of Ki Be'anan Era'e, as mentioned above, and also after. In the next Pasuk, when it says, Bezot Yavo Aharon El HaKodesh, and there again the word HaKodesh is spelled with the Vav. Now what is written again before these three words is mentioned, and also after in that next uh, verse, it's written, Bezot, in this Yavo, Aharon shall come to the Kodesh. The secret that the Torah is teaching is in regard to the threefold sanctification that we say of Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Now, this is what we say in the um, repetition of the Shemona Esrei. We also say this as part of the Shacharit davening after uh, Borchu also. Now, it has many, many secrets when we recite this. Its source has many, many details. We're going to just talk about right now a few of them and how this pertains to all of this. The middle, Kodesh, is in a state of concealment because again, in our verses, we have it openly saying Kodesh as it is written. Then we have the middle one of Kodesh, which is not revealed, but is concealed, but we see it from the Gematria of Ki Ba'anan Era'e. And then we have afterward the next Kodesh as it is actually written in the next verse. Again, Bezot Yovo Aron El HaKodesh, just to make that clear. The middle, the middle Kodesh is in a state of concealment, being only alluded to from the three words. The middle is an allusion to the middle column in the Tree of Life. This concealment is in the middle column, which is called Malchut, the last of a Sfirot, this world. An allusion also to this is that words between the concealed Kodesh from the word Eira'e, being the last word in this grouping until you get to the word Hakodesh. Now this makes this group then to be the seventh word, which basically comes out to six, which is a hint to Zir Anpin, the six Sfirot, and one which is Malchut, or as we say in Kabbalah, the Nok, which is the seventh it is precisely the lowest sphera of the central column where this Kedusha of Hashem is concealed. And this is our purpose as the rectification for the world to reveal it. The words each, HaKodesh, are Kadosh, plus you also have the letter He. If we add up the letter Hayes, because then you have HaKodesh, 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 that's three times five, then we get the value of 15. This being the name of Hashem, or his first part of Hashem's name, yud K. Just as the second part of the name is concealed, because you have yud K, you do not have the vav He, the other part, so is the last Kadosh, concealed until the full tikkun of the world with the coming of Mashiach, the final gula, the final redemption. If we add the value of the three words of Kodesh or Kadosh, we get the value of 1,212, which is basically 1212. Sounds like a test, a microphone test. <laughs> this is actually a perfect number that can be seen as a square of the matrix of 12 times 12. 
This can be understood as the sanctification of the threefold saying of Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh by all 12 tribes of Israel in completeness, to make completeness. Another secret that the Torah is teaching us is if we multiply 12 times 12, we get the value of 144. This word is the same value, or this value, of the word mitzcho, which translates as his forehead. This is in reference, as it is written in Exodus, in uh, Shemot, chapter 28, verse 38. There, it's written in regards to the tzitz, which is the headplate of the Kohen Haggadol. And there it is written on top of the tzitz, or on the tzitz, it's written, Kodesh La Hashem. So you have the word Kodesh, and you have Lamed Yud Ke Vav Ke. Now let's take a look at those full verses, actually from Exodus, from verse 36 through 38. So there it is written, V'asita tzitz zahav tahor, u v'tachta alav patuche chotam kodesh la Hashem. And you shall make a show plate of pure gold, and you shall engrave upon it the engraving of a seal, with the words, Holy to the Lord. Kodesh la Hashem. V'samta, verse 37, V'samta oto Al Patil Techelet Vahaya Al Hamitznefet El Mul Pene Hamitznefet Yihia. And you shall place it upon a cord of blue wool, and it shall go over the cap, and it shall be opposite the front side of the cap. Verse 38 Vahaya Al Metzach Aharon. Benasa Aharon et Avon Hakadashim Asher Yakadishu Bene Yisrael Lachol Matnos Kodeshehem Vahaya Al Mitzcho Tamid Loratzon Lahem Lifne Adonai Lifne Hashem. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, and Aaron shall bear the iniquity of the holy things that the children of Israel sanctify for all their holy gifts. And it shall be upon his forehead constantly to make them favorable before God. Now, let's just take a look at that verse. It's written in verse 38 twice. V'hoya al Metzach Aharon, number one. And it shall be on Aaron's forehead. And then it's also written after that, V'hoya al Mitzcho, Tamid. And it should be on his forehead always. So the question is, why have this uh, twice? What's what's the purpose of it? And, and the words as well, too. It could have only written it just the one time. It could have just simply have stated and just said that it should be on the forehead of our own. And you could have taken the word tamid, which is constantly or always, and brought it up and used it over there as opposed to connecting it to v'hoya al mitzchot tamid, on, that it should be on his forehead always. So what is the Torah trying to tell us over here? So the Torah is telling us something very, very interesting and again giving us a hint to this whole concept that we're talking about of the Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. How? So understand it like this. When it mentions the first time with the words al Metzach Aaron, it's being very specific. And it shall be on the forehead of Aaron, the person, the actual Kohen Gadol. Now we know that the tzitz was on the head of the Kohenim, of the Kohen Gadol that were throughout the ages serving in the Beit HaMikdash in that uh, post and in that position. However, we know that that did not last. Therefore, the word Tamid always is not written over there in this case because when the destruction of the Second Temple, the um, position of the Kohen Gadol from that point on ceased. However, the Torah is telling us something also, and it repeats it because the Torah knows this, God knows this, and therefore he says later on, he says in the same verse, V'hoya al mitzcho, and it will be on his forehead, Tamid, always. It's being um, not so specific. It's not saying on the forehead of our own. It's saying on his forehead. Who are the his forehead? This is, and why Tamid? 
Talmud seems to imply even after the destruction of the second temple, and in fact, this is the truth. Therefore, the word means ho, his forehead is a hint to every single Jewish person. That when we say the words, kadosh, 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 and give this sanctification, we are in effect, it is as if that we are wearing the tzitz, being like a Kohen Godol ourself. And therefore, we are actually benefiting and we are being, when we say kadosh, 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 it is as if we are inscribing upon ourselves the words and making ourselves kodesh la Hashem, holy to God. Now, there is only one other word in the Torah with the same gematria of kadosh, 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 which gematria is 1212. This is the word Tishukato, as it is written in Breshit, Genesis verse 7, chapter 4. It's written over there. Halo im teitiv se'et ve'im lo teitiv lepetach chatat rovets ve'elecha tishukato ve'ata tim shalbo. God is instructing and telling Kayan. Isn't it if you do good that you will be lifted, meaning you'll be forgiven, elevated? And if you do not do good, then sin crouches at your door, the opening of your door, and to you is its desire, but you can rule over it. Now, this verse is telling us that the Satan, the power of the other side, the evil urge, has a deep desire for us to cause us to stumble. But God tells us that we can overcome him and rule over him. The Torah does not write this great secret openly, telling us that what we must do, but instead it gives us a hint. It wants us to do our job and read between the lines. Now there is a saying, fighting fire with fire. The same is true also here. We need to fight desire with desire. Now what is concerning this that we found written actually in the first chapter of Tehillim or Psalms, that is in uh, from the um, verse, the second verse, and it's written over there, but Torah Hashem, Yirke Vavke, Chevzo, Uva Torato, Yehege Yomam Valayla. Translation, but his desire is in the Torah of Hashem, and in his Torah he deeply meditates day and night. The gematria of the words Betorat Hashem, Yudkei Vavkei Cheftso, his desire, is equal to the value of 1,218. This is six more than the, th the threefold of Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. This instructs us that to break and to rule over the desire of the other side, the forces of negativity, we need to add the power of six, which is the letter Vav. We can understand this many ways. One way we can understand this is that the next letter after the Torah Hashem Bechev so is in fact the letter Vav. This tells us to add this Vav and connect it to the words Uva Torah To Yehege Yom Belayla. And again in his Torah he deeply meditates day and night. This is the secret of the word Kodesh, holy. When we add the Vav to it then we actually get the word Kadosh over here too. To be Kodesh means to add the Vav through the study of the Torah day and night along with the complete performance of all the mitzvot one is able to do. Then he, the Kodesh, the Holy, can proclaim thus Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh with the Vav, helping to complete creation on all three sides, uniting all together. Now, for without the study of Torah day and night, it is impossible for one to rule over his evil urge, the Satan, and be called Kodosh, or Kodesh, holy. The secret of this unification is found in the Vav.
The Hebrew letter Vav, one fully spelled, which is Vav Aleph Vav, has the gematria, the numerical value, of 13, which is equal to the word Echad, 1. Concerning this, it is written in Bereshit, in um, Genesis. Over there, it's written, Vayihi Ere, Vayihi Voker, Yom Echad. And there was evening and there was morning, day one, or one day. Now, the deeper meaning then is to join the night with the day into complete oneness, just as Hashem did. This forms a chod, one, that manifests the letter vav, that connects all into oneness. One of the reasons why David HaMelech, King David, King David reversed the order was to unite the second cycle of the days with the first. It is well known that the first Vav to appear in the Torah is found in the beginning, which is actually the sixth word in the Torah, how it begins, of the word Ve'et. Breshit Baralokim et HaShamayim Ve'et Ha'aretz. What might not be so apparent, though, is why it forms this word with only these three letters. This is to tell us that it is only the Vav that links all of the letters together, which is from Aleph through Tuf, which is the first letter of the Hebrew letters to the very last letter, the Tuf, as well as all creation, since all was made up from these letters. The other proof and order of the Torah that it places this letter Vav is also to be the 22nd letter from the very beginning of the word Bereshit, from the very Bet. Since there are exactly 22 root letters, this tells us that it is precisely the Vav that is the binding force of all of the 22 letters. This, then, in regard to the Vav, is the mystery to another understanding in the Torah in another reference to the Tzitz, the Kohen Gadol's headplate. Now, it is written in Shemot, again, in Exodus chapter 39, verse 30, V'ya'asu et Tzitz nezer hakodesh, and he made a headplate, the holy crown. Why the extra description of these words, which is Nezer HaKodesh. Behold, here are some of the mysteries of these words. The gematria of these two words are exactly 666. Now, this is a good thing in Judaism, not a bad thing. What is 666? It could be understood, again, as the perfection through the power of the Vav on all three sides. For this is one of the reasons that the Tzitz is called a Nezer HaKodesh, a holy crown. This was the job of the Kohen Gadol, to perfect and to prepare the Vav to join the letter He, for those who understand, again, the Kabbalistic significance of this. If we take the cube of six being a hint to 666 or 6 times 6 times 6, we will get the numerical value of 216. Now this number is filled with many, many mysteries that we will explore on a different uh, lecture later on. But what we need to know for this point is that the first word in the Torah with the same gematria is the word uridu, which means and to rule over. Another word in the Torah with the same gematria is the word gavura, which is strength. Also a hint regarding to the sphira, which is called gavura, mastery. It is also from here that we see how everything fits together, for it is through the perfection of the Vav on all three sides, all three columns of the Svirot, the tree of life, that give one the might, the Gevura, power to fulfill in the upper and the lower worlds the commandment of Ordu, and to rule over the creatures of creation. This also includes the Satan, the evil force. This then is true of life 
which is 6 plus 6 plus 6, which is equal to 18, which is high. This is also one of the secrets of the verse in the book of Leviticus, Vayikra chapter 18, verse 5. Ushmartem et chukotai v'et mishpatai asher ya'asa otam ha'adam v'chai bahem ani Adonai, ani Hashem. You shall observe my statutes and my ordinances, which a man shall do and live by them. I am the Lord. The word v'chai and live if you looked at this word closely, it reveals the letter Vav linked to the word Chai, life. That is then 6 plus 6 plus 6, which again equals 18. This is true life, to put all in balance and then be able to literally suckle from the source of life, which is the tree of life. This is also why it is written here, Vahai Bahem, and live in them. The word bahem can be understood to mean haim or bet haim, which means that, that there are two. Two are they, because the word haim means they, and you have bet, which is two. So therefore, two are they. Which two are these? This is a hint. That there are two names to Hash, of Hashem that we're referring to, which is the highest of the Sphira Keter, which is a hekeh, and the name Yudke Vavke, which is the value of 26. These names together then form the Gematria 47, which is the same as the numerical value of the word Bahem. Now it is well known that the name Eheke linked to the Sphira of Keter, and the name Yudke Vavke is linked to Tiferet. When there is a well-balanced flow that unites these two spherot, then one is able to suckle, nourish from the tree of life. It is also here in the Pasuk that we also find are tied to one of the first questions that we also asked. Why does the Torah call the Kodesh HaKadoshim and refer to it as HaKodesh? the holy, that refers to actually the Aaron, the ark. This question now was answered to teach us all of these secrets as well as the countless others that we wait to be revealed with the final the Geula, the coming of Mashiach. But there is found here another proof to this relationship of all that is mentioned over here. The gematria of the word Nezer. To recall, we said Nezer HaKodesh referring to the seats. The Gematri of the word Nezer is 257. This is the same Gematria of the word Aaron. So now we see the hint to the fact that the Aaron is called Aaron HaKodesh, the Holy Ark.